Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are talking about this tree that I'm standing under. This is a Moringa tree if you are not familiar with it, but I wanted to share all about it with you because it has been great just like for our family in general. We have been taking Mor Moringa in like a variety of different ways for years. Um, so we'll get all into that, the benefits and all of that. But first off, check out this tree. I'm gonna let you know how we're using it today. Let me flip it around and show you some more. So here is our Moringa tree. We actually have a few. This is also a baby one. And then we have one over here and you can see how much taller than our fence it has gotten. It's gotten huge. It actually grows really, really fast. But for this video, we're talking about these pods. These are like their seed pods, um, but they're actually called Moringa drumsticks. And you can see, like, look how many are growing on this tree. It's just completely full of them. We just recently learned that they have amazing health benefits and they're good in all sorts of meals and there's different ways to cook them. So as we learn and are trying it out, we're going to share it with you as well. So yeah, look how long these things are and they're everywhere. So we're about to harvest them, let you know how we have been preparing them. So when you're harvesting these seed pods, you don't want to harvest them too early. So like this would be way too early. They're just getting started. This is pretty skinny. So we're going to freeze these and we're also going to cook them, but we want to harvest all the ones we can now so we can freeze them and kind of eat them uh, throughout the, the next few months because these are like free vegetables. And a lot of people wonder what they taste like. They kind of taste like beans um, and like asparagus kind of mixed together. So when you're harvesting, if you have this, this is definitely too skinny. You want to kind of stick with like the diameter of your thumb. So we're going to kind of move over here and we're going to take these ones. So we're just going to pull them off just like that. And I find that just kind of pushing up on them like this is easier. So we're going to harvest all these ones. And the reason why I like these is because once you cut them down, as you'll see, and you peel away the layer of skin, there's still going to be a good amount to eat. Whereas if I harvest Let's say this one right here, it's kind of an in-between stage. See the difference between the two? By the time I peel off the bark and then cook it, there's not gonna be too much. So the thumb is kind of the sweet spot here. And also while we're picking these and I'm harvesting, you should know that if you were just to leave these on the tree and let them dry up, uh, then you would have the seed pods and you could dry them up, open them, and there's about 10 to 15 seeds in here, and you can grow these, like there's a baby Moringa tree right over there. So these are all great right here. And you can see this tree right here is just producing so many, so this is why I say we're gonna freeze them. This is free vegetables. I went to Sam's Club the other day and for a bag of green beans was like $7. Where these right here, this right here, this will fill you up. And it's a great vegetable to eat with your rice, with your chicken, all types of stuff. So the first thing you need to do is make sure you wash them. So we're about to wash all the pods and then Heath is gonna show us how he cuts them, prepares them, all of that. So what you want to do is remove um, not as much bark as you can, but start to kind of clean it off. Because if you remove all of it when you go to boil it, uh, it's just gonna it's just gonna become mashed and it's not gonna be good. So just to process this, you're gonna start by making like 75% cuts, not all the way through, but just like that. So you can just peel, and you can see that's kind of what we're looking for, almost like a watermelon skin and then you're gonna rotate it. And you can see the bumps. So about every inch, there's a seed inside there. So I cut it, I'm gonna rotate it. I'm gonna make another shallow cut. And I'm just gonna peel this way. And then you can see this right here, I'm gonna peel this way. And so we kind of just have just these little sections that we're gonna put to the side. And as you get good at it, it's just gonna be like this. Rotate it. And 
and then the end I just cut off and that's that. So once we do a bunch of these, you're gonna be left with these chunks right here. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in here and we're just going to take another knife and you don't wanna go too deep and you don't wanna get all of it necessarily, but you're just gonna come in, make a little slit and peel and that looks good. I'm just going for this, that kind of design right there. So it still has some of its integrity, so it can be boiled, so it can be frozen, and it won't just become mashed potatoes on us, it'll be actually uh, pretty good to eat. Here's what it should look like. So we got a whole bunch, and we're gonna freeze most of this. We are gonna cook a few for a snack for us, and so you guys can see how to make this. But just to so note, if you're gonna freeze it, just like any other vegetable, you wanna make sure it's dry. So these are dry. We messed up one of the cuts here, so I'm gonna show you what's inside. So you can see these are the seeds. Um, this seed right here, it's pretty, it's a pretty big seed, so that size drumstick, you, you we could have just taken it off and dried it, and I'm pretty confident that that would make another tree, but all this is what we're gonna end up eating once it's cooked. These seeds and all of this right here, this white that's inside, that's gonna get really kind of mushy so you can eat it. And this is what's, the seeds and that is what's packed with all the nutrition. So we're gonna go ahead and cook some up. So we're gonna bring the water to a boil. We're just gonna cook, I don't know, we'll cook like 10 or so. But the water's boiling. You wanna make sure to put it in there when it's boiling. And you don't wanna put any salt in right away. You wanna put it in towards the end um, so that the, the whole drumstick stays intact. So we're gonna put about 10 in there right now. And you're just gonna boil that for about, you know, three to five minutes. And you can kind of feel, feel them. You don't want them to get, you don't want them to get too, uh, too soggy. It's been about four minutes. I'm gonna add in a little salt now and just let it continue to boil for like another minute. I've got everything prepped right here because we're gonna make it like sweet and spicy. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna end up taking the drumsticks out. We're gonna throw them in this hot pan. And I like to make it really hot so that it caramelizes the sugar. And I'm gonna take some of the water from this pot, which is also really healthy if you wanna drink that like a tea or something like that. I'm gonna put some of the water in here. I'm gonna put like a scoop of sugar, brown sugar, and then some red, uh, crushed red pepper and just kind of make it sweet and spicy. You're not really gonna, it, it's, it's just kind of to compliment. So you're gonna put the whole thing in your mouth when you eat it and the flavor is not gonna get on the inside of the drumstick, but while you're eating it and kind of chewing on the bark, you're gonna get all the flavor. So that's how we're gonna do it. It's gotten pretty soft in there, so we're gonna transfer them over. I'm gonna add a little bit of the water, not too much, or if it won't, uh, it won't caramelize. You want it just like that. Then I'm gonna add just about that much sugar. Just make it a little spicy. And we're just gonna start mixing it together just like this. So you can see all the water has pretty much evaporated out and um, we're just caramelizing the rest of it. Done. So that's how you want it to look right there. Delicious. All right, so once you got them, it's super simple to eat. Kind of reminds me of like edamame because you taste the outside but eat the inside. So it's super hot, but that's the inside, like he said, it's kind of turned into mush. So we're going to separate it into these three parts. You saw how easy, just like with your finger. And then here we go. Ooh, hot. And you just use your teeth to kind of clean Ooh. it off. I might have to wait, it's really hot. <laughs> Let me see it. There you go. Mm, they're so good. 
So all the nutrition is gonna be packed, like we said, in these seeds and in this right here. So you can see that it just kind of comes off just like that. You don't eat the skin. You kind of just use that to pick up all the flavor. And with your teeth, you just grind off all this pulp right here. They're honestly so good. They remind me of like an appetizer at like an upscale Asian restaurant. And super simple, two ingredients, so delicious. You can make it other ways. You know, you can do like garlic. You can use like a veggie, some sort of veggie seasoning or something like that, like an all-in-one you can find at Trader Joe's, but we like the sweet and spicy. That's a really good combo right there. Mm -hmm. Huh. So that is that. He is chowing down. It's so good. And then we have all this extra to put in the freezer. So awesome superfood just to easily grow at your house. I promise you it will grow so fast and it's so simple and easy. Um, and I really think your whole family will love it. So thanks so much. We'll have more food garden Moringa content coming soon.